uh, go go over that, how, how you, you got out of a lot of jams. Yeah, um, I think Coach Van Horn said it. Um, you know, with, with runners on, he did a great job making pitches, mixing pitches, and he really just mixed the whole game. Um, all three of them, change up, curveball, fastball, kept us off balance. Um, and those couple times we had him in trouble, he really dug deep and made pitches and got some strikeouts, and we weren't able to score. Yeah, I'm just a competitor. Um, those were self-inflicted. I uh, walked some guys and <clears throat> just missed some spots, gave them some hits. Um, but I just competed and just gave this team a chance to win today, and they just outpitched us today, and they just got that timely hit, and that was the uh, difference of the ball game. Okay, Aaron. Uh, Aaron Fitt, you in baseball. Isaiah, it seemed like you know you're trading zeros at the College World Series. I mean, first of all, that how much fun is is that kind of a thing to be a part of? And secondly, did you feel like you kind of found you know your rhythm really in that the middle to later part of your outing there? Yeah, I mean, it's fun when you're. Uh, Battling and putting up zeros. Um, it's the biggest stage of baseball, and <clears throat> doing it in front of 26,000 fans, it's it's special. Uh, we gave the uh, fans a treat, pitcher duel, and uh, I definitely found my groove. Started having all four pitches, and just felt more comfortable on that mound, and just command of all four pitches, and just threw them for strikes. Um, got ahead of more hitters, and just got quick outs. Okay, Bob. You know, Trevor, I think it's only the second time you guys were shut out this year. Alabama was the other one. With, with, you guys have been so good all season. Just kind of hard to believe you all got shut out. Just just have to give give FSU credit on that. Oh, yeah. We're just going to tip the cap. They did a, a fantastic job on the mound. Parrish and Flowers both there at the end. Um, like I said, they kept us off balance. Um, really kept the off speed down. So, you know, we weren't, there weren't too many pitches we were able to capitalize on and really had chances to capitalize on. He was that good today. Okay, second row there. Um, Adam Sparks of Tennessee and Trevor, the the off speed stuff was it uh, was it what you guys had seen on on video coming in? Was it better than what you had seen in the scouting report from Parrish? Um, I wouldn't say that per se. We knew that he was going to throw a lot of mix, throw a lot of you know the, the change and the curve, and he just did a good job locating. Didn't miss a whole lot. Was able to mix it in well with his fastball and pitch off that, and he did a great job. Bob again. Isaiah, obviously the team's gonna have to win a couple games for you to get another start. Do you do you have a good feeling that you're not you haven't pitched your last game yet, or what? What do you think about you know the the rest of the series now? Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. I don't think I pitched my last game. Um, <clears throat> this team's battled and competed all year. That's what we're gonna do. Um, it starts Monday. <clears throat> we just got to come out against Texas Tech and just come out, hit the ball, pitch really well, and just play Arkansas baseball. Um, but I definitely don't think it's my last time pitching as a Razorback. Okay, more questions for the student athletes? Okay, guys, uh, you're excused. We'll see you Monday. Thank you. We'll hold off here. And Thank you, man. Now questions for Coach Van Horn. Again, Adam. Yep, Adam Sparks, Tennessee. And Coach, uh, Parrish is good starts. He's been really good this year. His bad ones, not so much. What have – what did he have in the good ones that you saw tonight, and why, why has there been such a difference between him, good and bad? Well, he threw a lot of strikes tonight, and he was ahead in the count a lot. Uh, just really did a good job of mixing, keeping our guys off balance. You know, he, he really didn't double up too much. A couple of fastballs here and there, a couple of change-ups here and there, but uh, mixed it in and out, up and down. And when we got runners in scoring position, um, he wouldn't give us fastball to hit. When he'd throw a fastball to me, he was just setting up the next pitch, which was usually a changeup uh, to the right-handers. So uh, just, just he had command. He had it rolling out there. Aaron. Coach, you probably are used to this by now from Isaiah, you know, with the kind of year that he's had. But um, to see him go out here and, and have a game like this, you know, where he had to battle and he matched zeros for seven innings, um, you know, what more can you say about him and, and, uh, and what this performance, how do you kind of put that in perspective for him? Yeah, I mean, he, he did everything he could to give us an opportunity to win the game. Um, he, he probably didn't have his best stuff early, kind of kicked it into gear in the middle a little bit and, uh, you know, got out of a jam or two. But, uh, you know, it seems like I don't know how many starts he's had now, probably 18 or so. 
it seems like every time he goes out there, he gives a six plus, seven plus, and we were in every game and had a chance to win it. I mean, even his only loss this year, we lost three to two and had a chance to tie it up and take the lead late in the game, and we didn't do it. But uh, he's, he's just been special. Um, I think the players know that uh, when they come to the field and he's, he's starting, that we have a really good opportunity to win the ball game. Yeah, Dave, you guys obviously had guys in, in scoring position, left a lot of guys on. They, they, they did too. Do you just feel uh, like just just couldn't quite get that timely hit tonight or fly ball or whatever you needed? Yeah, we had we had really two shots to get him. We only left six runners on. We didn't have a lot of runners, um, when I say only. Uh, but we had a couple guys on, uh, you know, third base or second and third with uh, with less than two. You know, we, we've got to get – we've just got to make contact. Uh, we had runners at second and third, and they, they ran the infield in on us. And, uh, you know, Goodhart hit one off the end of the bat and went right at him. You know, it's kind of the way the game works. If it's – 10 foot one way or the other, we score two runs instead of one. If they stay back, uh, we get one run out of it. But, you know, give them credit. They did a great job and they, they gambled a little bit and it paid off. And, um, you know, it doesn't surprise me the game was low score. And I wouldn't have, you know, predicted one to nothing, you know, maybe maybe three to two, somewhere in there. But what a, what a great job by both pitchers. Okay, Bob again. That was kind of a crazy play in the ninth when Casey was charging in, ran. I guess the runner ran into him, knocked the ball loose. Just what? What was your? How, how did you see that play? Well, again, it's the kind of the breaks of the game. They were they were stealing on the pitch. It looked like to me, uh, shortstop was breaking to the bag a little bit late. Uh, runner hit it, or batter hit it, and you know, kind of hit it at us and had opportunity to field it, tag and throw, probably get a double play. Uh, I, I really don't know what happened. I'd have to see it again. I don't. I think it was all just so tight in there that he didn't have a chance to really get his glove in position to make a tag with, you know, without a without hard contact. I mean, he lost his glove and everything. So, uh, you know, again, it's uh, it, it just it's just the way it is. Um, it's the way the game works. Way in the back, hey, Coach. I guess that was basically my question. Doug, due to ESPN Radio, is he okay? Uh, did he come out of that okay? As uh, injury wise. Yeah, he, I think he's fine. I think he, uh, you know, jammed his wrist just there a little bit because it caught him awkwardly. Uh, I think if he was really, really hurt, he would have he would have told me. Uh, he may be a little sore in the morning, but I, I, I'll check on that later tonight. But uh, yeah, I think he's all right. Okay, we have time for one last question, Bob. I knew it'd be you. Yeah, Dave, and I don't know if you remember in '85. You guys beat South Carolina one to nothing. I think there's only been one other one nothing game maybe last year since then. Um, I don't know, do, you, do you remember anything about that game all those years ago? And did it remind you of that one at all? Yeah, one to nothing in 17 innings. What do you want to know about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we won that game. That's all I remember. Okay. Dave, thank you. We'll see okay, you. Okay, thank you. Monday afternoon. All righty. Home teams for Monday's games. Texas Tech will be the home team in their game against Arkansas on Monday, and Florida State will be the home team Monday night against Michigan. Both team, both visiting teams won today, so it was coin flips both ways.
Guys, please take your hats off with the chair. And thank you for having that rule. I'm serious. <laughs> that's that's the way it ought to be. That's just that's, that's rule. That's right. I did. You don't wear a hat to church. You don't wear a hat in a press conference. I used to work with Bum Phillips. He had a hat rule too. Uh, huh? Bum Phillips had a hat rule. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Sure. Yeah. Uh, once again, if you, uh, I think I think somebody's telling you to uh, fix your hair, Mike. Well, I'm, I'm used to a makeup lady, okay? <laughs> <laughs> once again, if you just came in, please turn off your cell phones, and uh, we will have a statement from Coach Martin, and then uh, open it up for questions for the student athletes, and following that, we'll have questions for Mike. Uh, Mike, give us your well, overview. Y'all saw the same game that I did, and that was just a, a, a masterpiece of pitching by these two men. It was a game in which uh, you're on the edge of your seat the entire nine innings. It was extremely well played by both teams. Uh, Isaiah pitched beautiful baseball for them also. It was a game that uh, if you knew you could go to a baseball game every night, you would be big time baseball fans because that's the way you hope that your team plays every night. And I, I know it's disappointing for the other team. They had uh, uh, a lot of things, so to speak, go our way. But I just can't say enough about Drew Parrish and J.C. Flowers. Let's get that clear. And the guy that's back there getting no credit whatsoever, he takes one off the sh arm, he takes one off the leg, nobody really cares, get the dadgum ball and throw it back to the pitcher and squat down and call the game. But this freshman, Matt Nelson, really is beginning to come of age. And uh, I'm very proud of the way he is improving. And I'm, I'm anxious to, to see him for I, I don't know, we know that that uh, we we got we got two for sure. So let's just look at it that way. I'll get a chance to see him play two, and we don't know what's going to happen. I can't I can't sit here and, and say we're in the driver's seat. This field is strong. This field is really impressive. So this this is. This tournament's a long way from being in anybody's hands. Okay, uh, open up for questions for student athletes and we will get a mic to you. Please identify yourself and um, we'll get your affiliation into whom you're asking the question. Uh, Tony Boone, Omaha World Herald. Uh, JC, can you just take us through the swing of emotions from the play at second base to scoring the run and then closing that thing out? Um, it was a lot of emotions going on, you know. Uh, it was a close game all all the way through, and uh, Arkansas played really, really well. And um, at the end of the day, uh, I was going to come on top, and uh, I was just glad to be able to score the the first and only run and uh, be able to close it out for my team. Okay, we'll go over here. Uh, Mike. Hello, Mike Malloy with the Orlando Sentinel. JC, talk about the catch that you made there against uh, the wall. Um. I saw it off the bat, and I felt that uh, I knew I could catch it if I had room. And obviously, I up. Okay, Bob. Yeah, I had questions for a couple of guys. JC, uh, were you stealing on that play where I guess you kind of ran into Martin and knocked the ball loose, or what? And could you just kind of describe that play? And then also, after you get done, I had a question for Drew. That's okay. Um, yeah, it was a hit and, hit and run. I think the count was uh, three and one. And uh, yeah, he just uh, he came across the bag, made a nice play, and I guess uh, his momentum and he tagged me on the stomach, and the ball just came out, glove came off, and I hope he's doing okay. And, and, and Drew, where does that rank? I know you've had a lot of great games in your career. Where does that rank? And it seemed like whenever you needed a strikeout, you know, with guys on, you were, you were able to come up with it. Rank as in like in my career? Yeah, or? Like your best oh, I mean, you know, pitching in Omaha is got to be at the top, you know, by far. Every kid dreams of playing at that field. And 
being in a situation like it was tonight with, you know, great fan support from both sides and great competition. So uh, it's probably the best game of my career. Okay, Adam. Um, for the, uh, Adam Sparks of Tennessee. And Drew, kind of a follow-up to that. It's a dream to pitch here anyway, but then when you have one of the best games of your life, what's that sensation like to to come through with your best when you're playing the biggest game of your life? Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to describe the emotions that we're going through the game because, you know, I don't really know what happened out there, honestly, as part of the emotion stamp part. I was just locked in and just trying to throw pitches and, you know, keep my team in the game. But probably in a few days from now, it'll it'll hit me and uh, I'll take a step back and try to take it in for a minute. Okay, Teddy. Uh, Matt, just w from your perspective, what did you see from Drew tonight? And, and do you feel like that was the best you've seen him this year? No, he. I mean, at the beginning of the year, he was lights out just like that against Maine in the first couple of opening series. And then throughout the middle of the season, I didn't catch him so much on Friday nights. Foster did a great job catching him. He still threw really well with Foster. And, I mean, his changeup was just unhittable tonight. It, the ball was stopping in slow motion. It was stopping midair. And it, it was almost as if the ball was stopping. And then the guys were already through their swing, and the ball wasn't even there. So, I mean... His fastball, he was locating well. His curveball was on. He was burying pitches when he needed to. I mean, he just did one heck of a job, especially on that pickoff, too, when we picked that guy off early in the game. That was awesome. Okay, we'll have a question for, for two more. So, Adam. This is for JC. Um, Florida State has not won their opening game in, in, in Omaha in quite a while. Were you aware of that? And do you think that puts you guys a little more in the driver's seat winning the first one? Um. <clears throat> Uh, I was here my freshman year, and uh, we lost the opening game. I wasn't aware that we haven't won one in a while, but I don't think that puts us in the driver's seat. Um, Michigan is a great team, and uh, we're going to go out there and battle just like we did tonight, and hopefully we get a good outcome. We'll do Mike and then Adam. Okay, Mike. Uh, Drew, there, I think it was the sixth inning. You got the last out. There was a chopper right back at you, and you kind of batted it down with your bare hand. Was that – just a, a reaction play, and did that did that sting any, or what the what how, what did that feel like off your hand there? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a reaction play. You know, in my head, I'm like, all right, this is a base hit. I'm gonna throw everything I can at to stop it. Um, as far as hurting, no, my adrenaline was going throughout the game, but I'm sure tomorrow it's gonna be a little sore. I got yelled at for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aaron. Aaron Fitt, D1 Baseball. Drew, I guess you'd probably say it's been a little bit of an up-and-down year for you uh, on the mound. What have you kind of been focusing on as we get to this last part of the season, and what do you think has been the key for you to be able to ha go out and have a night like this? I mean, honestly, everything that happened in the past is in the past, and it doesn't matter anymore. We just got to keep pushing and keep focusing on what's next, and the next step was tonight, and I couldn't think about the past, and, you know, just had to go out there and play my best and help the team out. Okay, guys, thank you. And we will see you Monday night. Thank you. Which is almost better. Mike, I don't know if you heard. You are will be the home team. Oh, is that right? Monday night. Okay. I didn't didn't realize that. Yeah. They I guess you <coughs> don't had to flip. Both Baker days. Baker won the flip. Both, I, I guess I guess so. Okay, let's open it up for questions for, for Mike. And uh, we can start here with it, with uh, Art. Art Masudi, Seminoles.com. Coach, uh, you guys hadn't won a, a road super regional uh, ever. You do that. You guys hadn't been on the road bunch in regionals, and you win that. Then you come here for the first time since 1999, and you win game one in Omaha. From, from your perspective, you've coached a long time. What's been different about this team in this run? I really think it was that meeting that the men had when things were not going right. We knew that we were in jail, and we, the only way we were going to get out of it was to start playing better and hopefully get in the tournament. And I think we, we played very well uh, against Clemson, three games, and, and we just uh, – knew that we had to continue 
to strive to get better and not fall in love with ourselves. And, and we haven't done that. And we know we're not falling in love with ourselves right now because nothing is settled. Nothing is t declared. We just know we got to keep battling. Hey, Coach, I know you won a lot more games than anybody ever, and you won over 2,000, but you, you, you were 0 for 5 against Stargard, so I think they'd beaten you more than anybody that you hadn't beaten. I think the, you, the worst record was 0 and 2 against a couple teams. Uh, were you aware of that, and how big a deal is it to, to finally beat them and beat them you know, here, here in Omaha? I knew that the University of Arkansas had, uh, had handled us right easy. I was not aware that it was – five to nothing so thank god i didn't <laughs> coach can you put drew's performance that into perspective um to do what he did against that kind of an offensive team in this kind of a setting um you know especially with the, the season that he's had and the career that he's had i mean the whole thing can you kind of put that in perspective Mike Martin Jr. and Clyde Keller did a great job of calling the game. I thought that they were ex just excellent. There's no way that I can say that I haven't seen Drew pitch this well. I've seen him pitch as well before. He's just that kind of battler, that kind of competitor. He He's a coach's dream when it comes to you know who your Friday night guy is and a great team player he's the only thing I've seen him do wrong while I stick his dad gum left hand out twice to catch a dad gum one hop ground ball that's the only thing I get a little attitude with him about but Drew Parrish is a great Seminole he's a, he's a good student He's a guy that has done so much for our program. He's a great leader, one of our captains. This program will certainly uh, miss possibly having him back with us next year. Okay, Mike. Uh, Coach, uh, uh, over here. Uh, just, CJ is going to start for you Monday, I assume. And uh, um, how much has he – improved this year and to talk about his his overall game this year sometimes last year mike he would throw the ball 95 96 but it would be an absolute no decision it would be ball one and all of a sudden he'll get an attitude and throw the next one a little harder and it's ball two he learned how to pitch he's not a guy that is trying to to throw it a hundred he's trying to hit his spots He's throwing at 96, but he's not overthrowing like he did last year. His breaking ball has gotten much more consistent, and I've noticed that Mike is starting to call more change-ups with him because that really gives him three very good pitches. Okay, here. In the Ryan, middle. Ryan Kelly, WCTV Tallahassee. Uh, 11, what's been – over these last seven games, what's pleased you the most on this win streak that maybe you didn't see earlier in the season? Probably the togetherness, the heart that our team has shown. You learn a lot about people when things don't go their way. And there were some things that so-called didn't go our way, but they, they fought. They're still fighting. They, they know they haven't uh, decided anything. There's a lot of baseball left. That's encouraging as a coach to know that you have a team like that. Coach Doug Duda, ESPN Radio here in Nebraska. To get to the ninth, you had to survive that double in the eighth. You went out and you talked to Drew. Did you consider going to the bullpen, and what did you tell him? at that point when you had a guy at third and, and one out? No, sir, I did not consider going to the bullpen at that point. Um, 
we talked about what we were going to do. Uh, was that the first and third or just the man on third? Yeah, just, the, just, just the, third. the man on third. We went over with our infielders to be sure that we don't, I call it cheating, where guys cheat up instead of being sure that they're, the way we teach it, they're one step from the grass, not on the grass, and just tried to you know, be sure to tell Matt that you're going to block everything because we trust you, and we're going to throw a curveball in the dirt occasionally, so get it done. We're very, very pleased with that young man. Okay, I think we have Ryan again. Eleven, with the two years that Drew's had, getting thrust into that Friday night role after Tyler Holton goes down on opening day to what happened in that regional to the up and downs that he's had this year, for him to have this moment on this biggest stage, how does that make you feel for the ace? It, it, it makes you feel that he's passing on what he learned to the young men in our program. We got a lot of young freshman pitchers. And his attitude, his approach to the game, his work ethic, he's passing that on. And that's so important in college life. You pass along good things, the others will turn out good. That's what I get out of it, because Drew learned from Holton. I can't. I, I won't stop talking about Holton if I get started. But that's uh, that's in the past. Very proud of this ball club because they understand that they haven't done anything. There's still so much baseball left to be played. Yeah, Coach, that, that uh, play in the ninth where Flowers, I guess he said he was going on a hit and run and kind of a crazy play where he there was a lot of contact there in the base uh, baseline. Just what, what was your take on that play? It was a play in which you saw a baseball player play the game the way it should be played. He had only one way to get to the bag, and he went in the, to the straightest line he possibly could. And unfortunately, the young man's glove was right there. And hopefully, he's fine. Did he stay in the game? In the game. Thank yeah. God he's OK. Good. OK. Jason Patterson, Island CWS. Coach, uh, you've been on both sides of this, as they've already talked about, winning the first one, losing the first one. A lot of discussion about the differences. But I'd like to know what, in your mind, is the major difference in the way you can approach things going forward after taking the first game? Well, I probably hold the record for losing the first two the most. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just, again, ecstatic with the way the guys play. They, they didn't, they're not thinking anything about the fact that we haven't done a certain thing. They did find out when we were in the outfield that that was the first game that we had won uh, on the first night in many moons. But I just think that this, this club has a good head on their shoulders. They're not one to go out and think they got it made. They know they've got a lot of work to do. Did I answer your question? Well, I guess I I'd like to know a little more. How, how does it allow you to approach things moving forward, winning the first game versus not? I know a lot of differences there, but what in your mind are the major advantages of going ahead and grabbing that first game? Well, I'm sure that the confidence factor comes into play, but there's still nothing going to change at practice. We will practice tomorrow before we play on Monday, and it's uh, – it, it, there's some things that we can cover that we did not do well, but they understand this the little things that are so important. So, okay, I think that'll do it, Mike. Congratulations. We'll see you Monday night. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Oh, man. 
Hi, Aaron. I'm just curious to hear you.